Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Kent, Washington, and we're going to start with some rainbow updates. Uh, first of all, this is where the Parva got moved. So if you'll recall before, the Parva were in the same tank as the Ungulums, and unfortunately where we lost the Maculosis, they were in that same water system. Uh, it was about time for them to move out of those rings and give them more space, so they got moved to this far tank where the Bosmani originally were. Unfortunately, uh, we only had, I think it was one... Uh, Bosmana hatch. They had a ton of those eggs fungus. So I moved the parva over here just because there's plenty of room for them. Um, there's somewhere between like 7 and 10 parva and you'll you'll kind of see them bolting in and around the, the, the lights here. You see a couple there um, right toward the, the left hand side. And sorry for the reflection on the, the water and the lights here, but um, this is where they've moved to. They're doing really good. They've actually been uh, even more active now that they're in this bigger water system which is good. That means they're going to grow a little faster. Uh, and we'll start seeing some good size put on these guys soon. Uh, now we're going to go and look at the running rivers. And I think uh, these are kind of like the, the all-stars, at least, of everything that I've had going well. And I'll come down to the front of the glass, and I'm sorry it's a little dirty. Um, but you can see just, <laughs> even though my camera is struggling to focus on them, how many of them are darting around in there. Uh, and we've got some that are getting quite a bit bigger than the others. That's actually really common in rainbow fish. Uh, this is what we will call like a, a runner. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different nicknames. I prefer runner uh, just because they're kind of running away from the rest of the pack, so to speak. Um, so those guys, uh, if you really want to optimize your breeding, one thing you're going to do is you're going to split the ones that really grow up in size away into a separate water system so that all the ones that are roughly similar size stay together. That way they're not getting outcompeted for food by larger fish. Uh, but as you can see, these guys are doing phenomenal. They're starting to get really obvious, um, you know, fish body shapes. And we're even starting to see some more like real body shape in them. If I look close, I can't really show it on camera. It's just hard for my camera to focus enough, but uh, they're doing great, which, uh, you know, Compared to losing the maculosis, this makes me feel really good. These are the fish I wanted the most, and they're doing the absolute best out of everything. So, um, you know, when when you have some bad stuff, you also have some blessings, and it's good to focus on those blessings, right? Uh, and then finally, we'll move over to the uh, the axle rod eye here. So these are the Herbert axle rod eye. There's also a couple gold eye decay in there, similar to the Bozeman eye. Um, nearly all the goldie eye decay eggs fungus and we'll kind of switch down here again dirty glass i don't worry about keeping the glass really clean on fry tanks because i don't want to disturb the water too much and risk hurting any of the fry while they're young uh, once they start getting to you know like half an inch uh, three quarters of an inch really and even an inch in size then i'll start worrying about keeping the glass a little cleaner uh, and you can see just some extra detritus down on the bottom this is right before a water change uh, day is going to come in so really this stuff all gets backed up it, it barely puts a dent on this system and the biggest guy down there is actually one of the goldie eyed uh, i think there's only like two total there's that one big one and uh, a little guy we just lost a lot of eggs to fungus but there's a good number of herbert axle rod eye and a good number of fish in total in the system all doing very very well so let's move on from that. Uh, I want to teach you guys some real quick basics on how to hatch and do early raising of rainbow fry. So first off, we're back at the running river tank. And what I want you to pay attention to is how much water movement is at the surface here. This is very little. As you can see, like toward the back of the sponge, there's more. But the further you get forward in the tank, there's this very calm spot, especially where the plants are. Rainbow fish for the first a month or so live in the top one quarter inch of water so it's really important not to have too much water movement because this can tire them out and kill them and if we move over here where the parva are you can see there's even less movement because those plants are creating kind of like almost like a lagoon of protective space and this is one of the reasons why i will throw plants in with my fry is to create these little kind of sheltered areas of almost no water movement uh, and then if we kick over to where the axle rod are, you can see a lot more water movement. This is good once you hit about a month old or so, a uh, month and a half. This is the kind of water movement just to maintain good filtration. Now, there's two ways to hatch eggs. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a spawning mop. You can literally just let your fish put the eggs in the mop, move the mop to a new water system, and let them hatch out. Uh, if you've got a sponge and you're doing similar water movement to what I showed you, that's pretty good. Now, if you don't have a lot of spare tanks, what you can do is take a small plastic tray like a sandwich container, or you can see these little trays that I use for uh, plants. You can see the same ones down in the tank. You can fill them most of the way with water and float them inside the same water system. This will maintain proper temperature. Uh, it's really good for rainbow fish fry. You really want to have them like 
82, 83 degrees, but at least 80. Uh, that just helps speed their growth and it's it better overall for them. And then with these, if you're just floating these containers, you have to manually water change these daily. Uh, not a whole ton, say like 20% or so, but this just helps prevent fungusing on your eggs. Uh, you can do it with a, a small um, pipette or a turkey baster or something like that. Just make sure you're not sucking the eggs up. So if you have uh, something like a, a super fine uh, filter sock or something like that, something that's like say 30 micron, put that over the tip and that way you're just getting water and you're protecting from preventing those eggs or something like that from coming up into those trays. And, and we'll move on and I'll show you those those breeding rings in comparison that I used. Um, this is a product made by Swiss Tropicals. Like I've said in the past, you'll notice the, the little jet lifter piece and the sponge filter are missing. I just floated this spare one that I'd cleaned off in my tank to show you a comparison of size in these trays. This is a good little product, but you'll notice, like, if you just look at it, it's a little styrofoam ring, it's a clear bit, and then a screen bottom. You could DIY the same thing like this with a sandwich container and just create your own bottom and a little ring to float. You could make your own version of this if you really wanted to. Um, so these are just some of the things I would use. I personally like the Swiss Tropicals product. I know I've, I've mentioned some downsides to them, but I think it's a good product. The easy route is going to be just a mop in a tank on its own or those little trays. Finally, let's talk feeding. You've, you've, you've hatched some rainbow fish. Awesome. How much do you feed and how do you feed? So you'll notice I have this teeny tiny scoop as I zoom in. You can see how small it is compared to my finger. And then as I tilt it to the side, you'll see it's not very deep. This is a little um, ocean nutrition scoop that comes with the decapsulated brine eggs uh, that they make. And I use this with Sarah Micron. The other food that you can use is golden pearls. They're, they're usually commonly available depending on where you are. And I'm about to show you exactly how much I put in. So it's not this whole scoop. I'll get a scoop. I won't fill it all the way. And you'll watch. And I'm just going to tap it on the side. Put that teeny amount of food in. You would do one of these like three times a day until you get to, say, 20 plus fish, and then you might do two. And as they get a little bigger, say they're getting toward about a month old, now you're going to do maybe three, three times a day. And then you can start moving on to live foods like baby brine shrimp and vinegar eels. These are both phenomenal for this. You notice like here where there's a line pogas, there's not as many fish. I would only do one bump in this tank too. That's it. Those are some real basics. If you guys would like a way more detailed video, let me know down in the comments and I can do a much more detailed thing about how to breed and raise rainbow fish. As always, guys, thank you so much and stay awesome.